Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Elavaris, and welcome back to Total War Warhammer. It has been a little while, but today I return to you with something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be showcasing a multiplayer battle. I have recently been getting into a lot of multiplayer battles, mainly because I decided I was going to start a dedicated Total War Warhammer Discord which I will link in the description if you're interested in joining. It's got over 100 members already, and I started it a few days ago. And basically, it is a Discord where uh, you have just tons of Total War Warhammer players, and people will be posting that they are hosting some PvP matches or whatever, just some friendly matches. A lot of our players have not been, have not really done any PvP at all, and now they're getting into it, uh, you know, people just post like, oh, you know, doing a few, running a few PvP matches, if anyone wants to join, go ahead and hop in this voice channel. You can also look for co-op campaigns and such, but because of this and this great community of people that I have fostered, I have been able to have some really awesome PvP battles that are quite cool and some of which I would like to show off. So in this battle that I'm going to be showcasing to you, the dwarves and the elves will be facing off. I will be the elves and my opponent will be the dwarves. So I'm going to load up the replay and return to you when it is loaded. Until then. Alright, so... Let us hop into this replay. I am playing as the wood elves, my opponent is playing as clan Angrand. We are going to be going over the comps as we hop into this. I will mention the actual matchup itself as we go in. Some things to note about the Dwarves versus Elves matchup. So, um, let us get started. Well, by taking a look at Clan Angren's army comp. So, first thing, he has two units of Longbeards. He has one unit of Iron Breakers. He has two units of three Silver Chevrons Dwarf Warriors. He's got three units of Rangers, two units of Thunderers, one unit of Longbeard Grey Weapons, Great Weapons, one unit of Miners, and one unit of Cannons, as well as Hulk and Half Stonebeard, King Lun Iron Hammer, and a Rune Lord. So that is the Dwarf Comp, and now moving over to the Elvish Comp, we've got two units of Treekin, two units of Eternal Guard with Shields, three units of Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts, three units of War Dancers with Azurai Spears, a Spell Singer of Life with only Earth Blood as her only spell, and a female Glade Lord on a Dragon, Forest Dragon to be precise. And we have one unit of Wild Riders without shields in the trees, and another unit in the trees on the opposite side. Moving along the ground here. So, um, this matchup is a very interesting one, mainly because... This is a very poor matchup for the elves. You can see I'm trying to snipe out a cannon here. Unfortunately, a few of the bullets catch here, and I can't kill one of the cannons. I do do some damage, but not that much. This is a very poor matchup for the elves, and that's for a few reasons. Most of the elves do magic damage. So all archers with enchanted tips do magic damage. Uh, Treekin do magic damage. Glade Lord does magic damage. Waystalkers do magic damage. Spellslingers do magic damage. So that leads to a few problems. First of all, all dwarves have a passive 25% magic resist, which really doesn't make sense because in the tabletop Warhammer game, um, they had resistance to spells, and magic damage does not qualify as a spell as far as I'm aware. But they all have 25% magic resistance, so a lot of your hard-hitting troops can't do much damage because of the magic resistance. Secondly, um, Rain, you'd think, oh, elves, you know, they've got this huge range advantage on the dwarves. They do. The only issue is, basically, all the dwarves have shields, and they're heavily armored. So, first of all, because they have shields, they're going to be blocking 55% of missile incoming missile damage. Um, and secondly, they're armored, meaning you're not going to do much damage if you don't have armor piercing. But guess which glade guard does armor piercing arrows, starfire shafts, and guess what they also do? Magic damage. So you're basically like, okay, I'm going to pierce through armor, but now I'm getting the, now 25% of my damage is being taken away because it's magic damage. Whereas the normal Glade Guard, sure, they don't do magic damage, but they don't do armor piercing, so they're hardly doing anything. So it's a huge pain in the butt for elves to try and win. Uh, uh, dwarves have a lot of sustain. He has his Rune Lord here, which would be buffing up 
his troops immensely. Uh, some people bring one or two runesmiths, which will be even worse, giving tons of damage negation and armor. So I haven't really faced uh, many people from Clan Angren, so I haven't seen these um, ghostly heroes that you can have, but apparently they hit like freaking trucks it's actually crazy which you'll see soon i didn't realize what i'm doing here is i realize he has um what did he have he had one need of iron breakers which have blasting charges right so i'm like okay i'll send the trekin in first so he can't disrupt my whole line because trekin have enough mass that they're not going to get blown away by some charges you can see we're exchanging arrow fire here i am in range of his quarrelers so uh his thunderers so i decide to pull back a bit and then start shooting again I'm pulling my Azrai Spear War Dancers out and now pushing in my Treekin. So he ends up just sending out both his heroes, which actually turns out to be really strong because he actually they end up doing a lot of damage to the Treekin, along with the missile fire from the Rangers. The Treekin end up getting battered. You can see the armor piercing on the Thunder is absolutely shredding through these Treekin. I was trying to get my Spell Slinger to heal them up because that's the core of my line. If these Treekin units go down, then my line is screwed because Eternal Guard can't hold a line for more than 10 seconds. And Azra Spear War Dancers are really meant to be on the flanks, kind of pushing the Dwarves in and compressing them a bit. Now, the reason why I may want to compress the Dwarves is because if I have a lot of units that are together, then that means I can heal a lot more units with my um, healing from the Spell Slinger, the Earthblood. You can see my Treekin are taking a lot of damage. I decided I'm going to pull them out and get some heals going, which I probably will do soon. You can see my Wild Riders are coming out of the trees and riding towards. I've still got another unit right over here. But they're pretty well defended. And Now I decided. I didn't realize this originally, but these guys, these Ethereal units, are weak to magic attacks. And because my Glidlord does magic, she absolutely chunked that hero as soon as she went in. My Eternal Guard are breaking from the fight against the leader and Kinglon Ironhammer, and most of his units are still at high health. You can see the balance bar is tipping in the enemy's favor. I have my Azrai Spear War Dancers going head-to-head -head with these um, Dwarf Warriors, Triple Star Chevron. You can see they're charging up into the air. We have some nice flips. I really love the animations for Azrai Spear War Dancers. They're just so cool. You know, you see all these little flips and spins. Take, doing quite a bit of damage, you can see they just engaged this healthy unit, and they are chewing through it. We have another engagement over here. And you can see my Wild Riders are just sitting in the back as I micro everything else and try and look for a good target to send them on. You can see their unit of Thunders is breaking from the fight under that missile fire. He does pop plus 30 Omer armor. The Master Rune of Oath and Seal going to be a pain in the butt. Now I do make a micro mistake and let my Glade Guard get too close to his Thunderers and Quarrelers, or Thunderers and Rangers, and they end up taking a lot of unnecessary damage. But here comes the Hammer. I am bringing the Cav in. Cav come in, hammer into these long beards. I probably should have gone for the quarrelers here, but I do make a charge here and charge straight in for these these uh, rangers here, these very light armored. Most of the, like, really the only light armor units the dwarves have in this battle anyways. I get a good hammer in here. My second force of wild riders comes in to hammer the miners that are trying to go after my second group of wild riders, and you can see I'm doing a lot of damage here. My Azrai Spears are still over here. I'm having a little bit of breaking on my front line, a little bit of wavering. See, my Treekin is not faring so hot. We do have another Arrow of Kurnos coming in, not doing too much damage to these Longbeards since they're really spread out. I'm starting to pull back my Wild Riders. Really, what you have to do to win is the Elves, you just got to get constant Cav charges. You just got to keep the pressure going. So I'm trying to rally all my Wild Riders who are getting a little held up by this fleeing group of Rangers. I do charge my dragon into their Thunderers and Rangers who are bunched up, meaning they won't be able to shoot at her, which would be really good. Doing a huge hit there. And I do use the Prey of Anath Rayma to hold these Longbeards in place so that my Wild Riders can get out and then cycle around and hit some more of these Rangers and potentially get in here for some good hammers because they do have a pretty strong line. They got Stay in the Ground on so they're not going to be breaking anytime soon. Treekin are falling. I do have these two units here who I thought were fighting originally, but then I re but I didn't realize for a while that they were uh, not close enough to the fight. See, I've got my Glade Lord in the back, who I'm spamming micro orders on. So she's going to be coming into the fight soon. Ooh, a little bit of lag there. Now he does now pop his Master Rune of Negation for plus 44% damage resistance, which is ridiculous. 
You can see I just got my calf stain in here. I was trying to pull them out, and I'm going to be moving them right about now. I'm getting my Glade Lord out because I don't want his Lord to focus my Glade Lord because she is very, very squishy. I do get my healing going again. I get a nice hammer with my Wild Riders in the back of his Iron Breakers here. See the battle starting to tilt in my favor as my Wild Riders were absolutely tearing up his back line. Another Arrow of Kurnos doing a little bit of damage. I'm not Arrow of Kurnosing their Lords because um, they have, you know, Missile Resistance and Magic Resistance really not going to do much. Wild Riders still fighting in the back here. And I still haven't... No I didn't notice the whole battle, I think, that these guys weren't fighting. I thought they were, but... Some of them are just... Actually, the way... The, the War Dancers are fighting, but these Eternal Guard unit is not... Get another Earthblood coming up here, trying to keep my units. Now I finally notice and pull them in to charge. We can see we've got some havoc in the back lines here as the Wild Riders are pounding away at these Thunderers. More Wild Riders who have taken quite a bit of damage, trying to pull them away from those Dwarf Warriors. And Azra Spear War Dancers tearing apart these Miners. 131 kills. A lot of kills for these War Dancers over here. Definitely tearing it up. These War Dancers have bested the Long Beards and are causing them to pull out. Just doing a few last hits here, killing the last few. And now it comes down to the fight at center. My Glade Lord is around. Plurry of Anathrema keep these guys in place, so hopefully not a lot of them can attack me. I'm going to get the Wild Riders in while they are stunned. Dragon just walking around here, charging through, and Wild Rider is going to get yeah, a little lackluster of a charge there blocked by the Dragon. And now I'm bringing the dragon over to try and finish off the last remaining of his force. Another small hammer here into the back of his soldiers. And I do have my um, spell slinger pulling her back a bit as she's trying to be focused by his lord. And my dragon now coming into the back of these iron breakers. I'm going to try and just break their will to fight. You can see his Rune Lord is really just so tanky, and especially with his missile and magic resistance really not doing much. My archers have finally ran out of ammo. Wild Riders just cycle charging. I believe they're coming back to hammer this line of Dwarf Warriors that he has uh, remaining here. Really not much he can do at this point. Most of his troops are routing from the fight. And there is the final retreat. The Lord breaks as the rest of his units has fallen. An Epiric victory. If we just end the replay, we can see the final stats here. 64 kills on my Glade Lord. Not too bad. Spellsinger of Life, 12, obviously. She's not going to get much. Eternal Guard, this one got absolutely obliterated. But these war two units of War Dancers, 100 kills, 131. Definitely pull pulling their weight. Very good amount of kills on the Wild Riders. Definitely the damage dealing in this comp comes down to Wild Riders just slamming them constantly. You got to keep on their range units, make sure they can't get much shots off, just in their back lines, causing havoc. Um, he did Rune of Wrath and Ruin a few times and absolutely muck, uh, I think, this unit of Wild Riders anyways as they got close. Um, and also the War Dancers are very good defense, so they can hold in melee combat for quite a while. And they also have good... Um, they have armor piercing and they're also melee experts, so they do quite a lot of damage to um, dwarf units as well. So as long as they're not, you know, being focused by lords and such, like you saw there, I was deploying them in the flanks, then they're going to be able to hold their own and deal a lot of damage. So that is it for today's battle. I hope you guys enjoyed taking down... Clan Angrand as the Wood Elves, not an easy task. It was pretty close uh, for a little while there. It was swinging in his favor towards the beginning as he got some very good hits in on my Treekin very early on, but I managed to Earthblood and keep them alive throughout most of the battle along with my front line, allowing my Wild Riders to just wreak havoc in the enemy backline. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers, guys.